Good, af good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, everyone. Can you hear me well? Oh, good yes, afternoon. We can hear you. Yes, perfect. Good, mo uh, good afternoon, Dr. Zahid. Uh, we're just starting the session. I can see people are still trying to log. So we'll give them from five to 10 minutes till they uh, log and then we'll, uh, we'll start. Perfect? Yeah, perfect, perfect. Okay. So, um, I'm so excited. I am so excited as well that, that uh, Embril has given me this op opportunity that, to be popular among the uh, global context, inshallah. Inshallah. Uh, so uh, we'll uh, we'll get this session uh, started right away. Just a second. We'll start the recording, and we'll put everything in the play in its place. Just give me a minute. Okay, please. Everyone, it's a pleasure to be here with all of you today, and it is an honor to be co-presenting and moderating a session for Dr. Mahapa Zahid. Uh, it's a great honor indeed. Um, so, um, uh, we will start the presentation as follows. Uh, we'll introduce, uh, I'll introduce uh, Emerald, uh, the host, and uh, our uh, commitment to uh, the SDGs and um, the resources that's relevant to the SDGs presented by Emerald. We'll have each uh, uh, slide for the type of content. Uh, with a QR code that you can scan from your screen and log right away to the content that's relevant to the SDGs, uh, to each of the SDGs that we represent. Uh, then we'll be introducing Dr. Zahid and we'll have a, a, a quick interview uh, uh, with him. Uh, then Dr. Zahid is, will have prepared a great presentation, a very informative presentation uh, for you. Um, we'll take all your, your questions, please state them so we can take them at the end of the session. We'll make sure uh, to take all of your questions. Your questions can be sent to us uh, on the chat part or on the questions part. You can simply write your question and I'll make sure to read uh, all of the questions that we get during uh, the time slot that's dedicated to answer the questions. Uh, uh, and Dr. Zahid will have um, uh, a mid-presentation uh, engagement uh, questions for all of you uh, and a brainstorming one uh, to get your opinions and your point of views too. So please stay focused with us and you can write your answers and you can write what you think and I'll make sure to read it for uh, Dr. Zahid. Uh, so without any further delay, it's a pleasure to be with uh, you today. My name is Mahinoor Okda and I am uh, the um, Publishing and tra uh, Training Relationship Manager for the MIA region. I've been with Emerald for uh, six years now. I'm in the education field for around um, uh, uh, 17 uh, to 18 years now exactly. Uh, so I'm honored and pleasured uh, and waiting for this session uh, as you, uh, as all the audiences here to, to, um, to, to get uh, all this informations and uh, and knowledge and experience that we're going uh, that uh, Dr. Zahid will be kindly sharing with all of us today. So I'm I'm really excited to be here and I'm honored to have uh, this session with with him. So um, let's talk a little bit and give you an idea about who we are for those who don't know Emerald and uh, our commitment to the SDGs. So Emerald is a global publisher. We were founded. Uh, in 1967 in core subject areas like business and management and uh, education, engineering, information sciences. And now we have in our journals only we have over uh, 13 different subject areas. We have 310 uh, journals, 3,600 books in the front list. 
our books are divided into uh, education, uh, um, um, social sciences and education, uh, business management uh, and economics and information, uh, library information uh, sciences. Uh, we have also teaching cases, uh, around 2,600 teaching cases in uh, in different collections we have a collection that's dedicated to the emerging markets case study collection uh with over uh, 1000 cases these cases are listed in scopus they're peer reviewed 100 percent of them uh, uh, uh contains teaching notes and an instructional manual uh, that's available for all faculty uh, it's uh, teaching cases uh, that's uh, mainly discussing and uh, elaborating about rising economies. We have also the TCG collection, the case journal collection, and these around 300 cases that's dedicated to the use uh, um, and benefits and of the usage writing and teaching with the uh, cases. We have also the case for women collection, which was uh, in collaboration with Forty and the uh, Round Table um, Center, and it was uh, the, these were the winning cases in a case writing competition for uh, a female protagonists and uh, unrepresented, uh, underrepresented uh, leaders. Uh, we have also licensed content from the top leading business institutions. Um, around the globe, uh, we have a licensed content from Darden School of Business, um, Kellogg's, uh, CSEMP, Ahmadiyabad. Um, uh, we have also from uh, IMA, um, uh, uh, African Association for Business School, Khazendar Case Studies. We have a lot of cases that are very interested and interesting and. Uh, and uh, helps you to uh, to elaborate and um, uh, uh, make your make your education process and uh, the theories that you're teaching much more relevant uh, and engaging for your students. Also, we have our expert briefings by Oxford Analytica, and they're around thirty six thousand briefings now in in different formats. And it used to be. Uh, was created to inform the U.S. president with all the current events that's happening around the globe, with its uh, um, economical uh, uh, implications, uh, uh, social implications, political implications. It's biased. It's written by anonymous uh, 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 political and economical experts, uh, uh, worldwide professors, uh, ex. Uh, presidents and ministers and uh, le uh, world le uh, leaders uh, so it's uh, it's it's um, it's very reliable uh, you can even tailor a whole course around it uh, for 50 years we've been championing fresh thinking uh, and it has been the heart at emerald business we are aiming to be a facilitator of impact we've been encouraging equitable health and sustainable research and publishing for all that has been our target from the very beginning so our goal is to help those in the academia or the people in practice to work together to make a real positive change in the real world that we can actually measure uh, we have more than 500,000 k researchers in over uh from over 130 countries and uh, and regions around the world. We have more than 30 million downloads for the journals only per year. We have 109 million visitors uh, on a yearly basis for uh, our platform uh, worldwide. Uh, so these are, as I said, our um, available resources our ebooks our e-journals our expert briefings and e-cases and of course after the session you'll get a follow-up email with a complimentary certificate of attendance with uh, some reliable um, uh, and uh, uh, and free 
links for all our content and other resources that you uh, will find, um, of course, beneficial for all of you. And of course, a link to the recording of the session. So let's talk more about Emerald and how they are uh, commi committed to the UN SDGs. So in January 2021, uh, uh, we became at Emerald a founding signatory of the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, the UN SDGs Publishers Compact. What does that mean? It means that we have actively acquired and promoted content with more than 62% of Emerald journals being mapped to one or more of the sustainable uh, development goals for the UN. For those who don't know the sustainable development goals, there are uh, 17 sustainable development goals, uh, no poverty, zero hunger, good health and well-being, quality education, gender equality, uh, clean water and uh, uh, sanitation, uh, affordable and clean energy, decent work and economic growth, industry innovation and infrastructure, uh, reduced uh, inequalities, sustainable cities and uh, communities, responsible consumption and production, uh, climate action, life below water, life uh, on land, uh, peace, justice and strong institutions, also partnerships for the goals. So these are the 17 sustainable development goals and uh, mainly they are under the umbrella of quality of the education, healthier uh, lives, uh, equality and uh, sustainable management. So we focused our publishing program towards the sustainability, quality education and gender equality goals. We've launched the Emerald Engage to support the researchers who may have been uh, already uh, dispropor disproportionately uh, impacted by the COVID-19 uh, pandemic that, of course, started a year earlier than, uh, uh, um, than 2021. And then we have launched an ethical procurement process in this process, it allowed us to engage with suppliers about the SDGs and ensure that we work with partners that share the same core and values that we share and are committed to. We have refreshed our responsible business strategy in order to align it with the SDGs with a focus on education, equality and environment. So uh, for uh, uh, the SDGs, we um, the first one with a fairer society that covered the no poverty, zero hunger, gender equality, a decent work and economic growth, reduced uh, in, uh, inequalities, peace, justice and strong institutions. We are passionate about working with researchers globally to deliver a fairer, more inclusive society with partnership that has never been important than in today's divided world. And uh, uh, in the coming slides, you will have um, our uh, e-book select for the fairer society content, that uh, the, the books that's relevant to the fairer society con uh, SDG content and you can scan, we'll give you a minute if you'd like to scan uh, the QR code, it will take you right away to this collection. We'll give you a minute for you to scan the code. So the next uh, goal that we are committed to, which is healthier lives, 
and for healthier lives we are committed to uh, six of the SDGs no poverty zero hunger good health and well-being clean water and uh, uh, sanitation decent work and economic growth reduced inequalities also so we understand the importance of a world that re recognizes and protects the most vulnerable and acknowledges the importance of a healthy mind also as well as a healthy body so our ethos is one of equity and helping researchers to move beyond the restrictions of traditional subjects that discipline and support these two, uh, uh, goals in their uh, uh, published research so again this is another slide with the content that's relevant to the healthier lives uh, that we uh, publish and also you can scan this qr code to take you to the collection to this specific collection The fourth commitment is our commitment to a responsible management and that we are committed to the decent work and uh, economic growth, industry, innovation and infrastructure, reduced in inequalities, sustainable cities and uh, communities, responsible uh, consumption and production and climate action. So at this uh, collection we aim to champion researchers, practitioners, policymakers, and organizations who share the same goals uh, of contributing to a more ethical, responsible, and sustainable way of working. So, where these institutions recognize that governance should be just lawful and built on ethical and sustainable practices, we will work with them to facilitate the real impact of what they do. And this is the slide where it contains uh, a QR code for the collection for a responsible management that you can also scan. And you can see some of these titles are very uh, interesting, like a global tariff war. There is a go-to market strategies for women entrepreneurs. And we have seen during COVID a lot of entrepreneurs, a lot of uh, uh, small projects started online uh, that became a very successful business later on. Also, we have uh, the climate action uh combating climate change and its impacts tourism in the mediterranean sea the emerald handbook of women and entrepreneurship in developing economic uh, eco economies the conflict-free socio-economic systems uh perspectives and contradictions so there is a lot of interesting articles just by reading these articles you can see how relevant they are to the SDGs and, and, and how interesting they are. The last uh, uh, um, uh, 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 group that we are committed to is the quality education for all. So the quality education for all, we are committed to, <coughs> sorry, we are committed to the quality education, reduced inequalities, peace, justice, and strong institutions. So we believe in quality education for everyone, everywhere, and we, and by highlighting uh, uh, the issue of uh, um, of this quality education and working with experts in the field, like what we are doing today in this session with Dr. Zahid, we are working with one of the top experts in this uh, field of quality education and reducing inequalities. Uh, we can start to find ways that can we can all be part of this solution. And I think, uh, I believe, I strongly believe that Dr. Zahid 
today with his idea and his uh, experience will help us uh, to all be a part of uh, uh, the practical application of these um, SDGs. And uh, of course, he is one of our uh, top authors and researchers in this content. So we have also uh, a QR code for the, this content. So we have quality, uh, education, inclusivity, equality, and lifelong learning for all. Uh, we have some interesting titles like higher education funding and uh, access in international pr perspective. We have also international perspectives on gender and higher education, student access and success. And you can see refugee education, active learning strategies in higher education and 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 much more of uh, very interesting titles that of course I'm sure that Dr. Zahid will present us with even more elaboration and informative uh, ways. Uh, to uh, achieve these goals. So, um, if you have any um, questions before we start uh, with uh, introducing our uh, guest for uh, today, Dr. Uh, Mohammed uh, Zahid, uh, please go ahead. So, uh, Dr. Zahid, we made you a presenter, and I would like to first of all uh, welcome you today for uh, today's session, and we wanted to uh, thank you for being with us today. So, for those uh, who don't know Dr. Zahid, uh, uh, we are honored to have him. Uh, today with us. So Dr. Zahid, he is um, he's a professor with a PhD in management uh, and corporate responsibility. He's the dean uh, for the Faculty of Management Sciences and the director for the City University Center for Sustainability uh, Studies. Um, also, uh, Professor uh, Zahid is um, uh, the Director for Sustainability at City University in Pakistan with a PhD in uh, Management Finance. He won the Best Paper Award uh, at the International uh, Symposium on Research in Innovation and Sustainability, ISORIS, in Malaysia, and the winner of the Emerald Literati Award for the Outstanding Journal Papers, uh, too. So we are honored and uh, we have a great uh, pleasure to have you with us today, Dr. Zahid. And uh, I would like to start with uh, uh, some questions to introduce you more to uh, our uh, audiences today, if it's that's okay with you. Yeah, sure, sure, ma'am. Thank you so much, Mayu. Thank you so much. Uh, I'm ready for any questions. Yeah. So, Dr. Zahid, uh, it's an honor to be with you today, and I think that uh, uh, the attendance will share my interest to know more about you. So, we've prepared some questions uh, to give them a more insightful, uh, elaborated uh, uh, data about you and what we're going to do today and present and your experience. So, um, we'd like to ask you first, why did you choose the path? for research in the field of sustainability, and for how long was your journey so far? Mm -hmm. uh, as you have discussed, and everyone knows that our society is facing severe climate and inequalities issues. Uh, to overcome these sustainable development goals are one of the important agendas to overcome these issues. We can see its essence in uh, and demand in every part of life to balance the environmental, social, and governance aspects. Hence, uh, it, it induced me to choose the path of research in the field of sustainability, 
uh, to address the, the, the broad agenda of uh, sustainable development goals uh, through education for sustainable development. Nowadays, uh, you can see that everyone uh, call it ESD, Education for Sustainable Development. So uh, I started this journey after uh, receiving my PhD in sustainability and have achieved several milestones in the subject area by uh, publishing in well-reputed journals, uh, completing industrial and academic projects on the social, economic and environmental sustainability. Uh, uh, I have also completed some of the academic projects as well and uh, publishing books, winning awards as you have mentioned uh, in your uh, introduction and graduating students in the area of sustainability. So far, I have graduated more than 25 students in, uh, uh, in the post-grade and the undergrad level, uh, including MBA, we can call it MS, Master in Sciences, uh, it is 18 years qualification, and PhD in corporate sustainability practices and focusing the sustainable development goals. I also work with the numerous organizations such as the Pakistan Stock Exchange, uh, the Small and Medium Enterprises Development Authority for Sustainable Development Practices, uh, public listed companies of Pakistan and some of the think tank uh, to promote the sustainability culture within the uh, developing countries, uh, countries like Pakistan and Malaysia. Uh, last, I will say that uh, I joined the expert pool of uh, Emerald, so it is indeed an honor for me and I am I'm really thankful of the uh, Amina Saeed, uh, Mainur and uh, Nadin for inviting me to be part of the panelists uh, on uh, sustainable development goals and education for sustainable development. So indeed it will create a great impact on society and uh, to aware the stakeholders. Uh, the pleasure is all ours. I'm, sh I'm sure that uh, Ms. Amina Saeed, our business manager for uh, Pakistan, she shares the same uh, uh, thrill and uh, an honor to be with us. She's attending with us today and uh, Ms. Nadine too, our mark regional marketing manager. And of course, they'll uh, have the, the time to thank you uh, at the end of our sessions there today. So, um, I also would like to ask you, so why did you publish with Emerald? Like, I know you've published a lot, but why did you choose Emerald for this specific topic? Okay, uh, it was a very nice story that uh, I, 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 uh, I have written my second paper and uh, submitted to the Emerald. So it was uh, really, uh, I, I always fascinated by the logo of the Emerald. So I, I have submitted my, I had submitted my first paper to the Emerald and uh, 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 to the one of the journals uh, related to sustainable development goals and corporate sustainability, and uh, I was astonished that after one year, uh, uh, I had seen that I have been uh, chosen for one of the uh, top papers, the award for excellence 2016, outstanding journal paper from Emerald, and my contestant was some of the top professors, and I have beaten them. So I was, it was very nice for me, and it has really encouraged me to be further overwhelmed in the area. Since then, I have been working with them in different cap uh, capacities to excel in the field of research, and I am submitting my uh, papers to the Emerald because they are uh, minutely focusing on the SDGs, uh, as you have mentioned in your presentation. So that's why my first, always my first choice is Emerald. The pleasure is all ours, really, to have uh, uh, an experienced and uh, and passionate uh, author uh, like yourself with this great experience and exposure. That's an, that's of course an honor, and it adds to the uh, quality of the publications we have on Emerald. Um, so I know that uh, uh, you don't only publish; you are also a user for the Emerald uh, uh, resources. Uh, so we'd like to have your views as a as your user experience on Emerald's content uh, that's aligned with the UN SDGs. What do you think about them? How did you find them so far? Uh, as I mentioned, that uh, Emerald is working and contributing significantly in the areas uh, in the area of United Nations Sustainable Development Goals and its broader agenda. Uh, they have aligned the theme of several well reputed journals with the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals and doing an excellent job. So furthermore, I have seen that uh, they are issuing several relevant uh, special calls 
uh, as I mentioned, minutely focusing on the sustainable development goals, sub targets, which is a remarkable job in my opinion. And uh, I think so, the, the contents are really matching with the sustainable development goals. Thank you so much. I, I can find them also very interesting. And um, I would like to share the same thought as you said i used to be a user for emerald uh, resources before even joining emerald during uh, my postgraduate studies in education and it was like 90 percent of the resources that we used in uh, as references and resources in the education field was from emerald and i always wondered uh, about how do the uh, choose and that the amount of effort and time they 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 um, they spend on choosing and and uh, and reviewing these researches and these uh information to present it in such a presentable and easy uh, accessible way to researchers and now i'm one of them so i'm very proud honestly uh, so i know it's not an easy path and i know there is a lot of challenges that all researchers um, face around the world. But what are the challenges that you faced in Pakistan within your role specifically? Um, actually, uh, nowadays, Pakistan is, uh, is facing uh, several challenges, including social, economic, environmental. And I, I always include the inequalities with it. So, uh, uh, so which must be addressed urgently, and we need urgent solutions. So, moreover, Pakistan's uh, current economic and political situation has further ignited and, and slowed its progress towards the, specifically towards the sustainable development goals and general uh, development as well. So, higher education institutions uh, have also been severely affected by the above problems. So, nowadays, the, uh, our universities are really facing the sustainability issues, uh, specifically in funding and something like that. Uh, and overall survival has been uh, literally jeopardized. Uh, hence, uh, these challenges would require serious attention to achieve the, the sustainability of these higher education institutions and the uh, broader agenda of SDGs and uh, education for sustainable development. So, so we need uh, a lot of efforts that to, to embark these, uh, these challenges and then to overcome these challenges and re-establish our uh, higher education institutions so automatically we will proceed for the broader agenda of sustainable development goals that's indeed uh, great and uh, and um, and we are looking forward to see more researchers in in this and we i'm sure that uh, I am sharing the, the majority of the opinions here that everyone will be following you from now on after this session to see uh, what comes next. So um, I know that I'm, 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 I have a lot of questions, of course, but just to know more uh, and, uh, uh, from your experience. So what do you think? is the actual impact for the SDG, SDG research on the community um, and, and how it's measured? In my opinion, uh, sustainable development goals related research has a real impact on the society. Uh, it gives awareness to the community by highlighting the key issues and demonstrating the, the critical findings to the relevant stakeholders for their, uh, for their optimum and rational decisions. Likewise, promoting the research agenda related to the sustainable development goals uh, would help the community to achieve environmental, social governance, and uh, equity issues, specifically in developing countries, and uh, uh, no exception uh, in Pakistan as well. So, so I think so. It has a real impact on the society nowadays. Uh, I can see that when I, when I started my journey back in 2014 in, in Malaysia, so 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 the research was very limited, and now I can see that everyone is talking about the sustainability and they are integrated into to, to their subject domain like uh, computer science uh, environmental like uh, uh, supply chain management management sciences uh, even in the engineering sectors as well so i think so it has an impact on and 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 in the awareness sessions and like the such sessions from the embed or, or other uh, uh, platforms may create a great impact as well
thank you so much. Yes, I totally agree with your opinion, and I can. I started to see the impact in research. I started to uh, to see and feel the changes in some of the top educational institutions. And of course, the, the better awareness about the SDGs and the better awareness that we should start to collaborate. Um, it's a one word community. Uh, everything that leads to another, everything impact the other, every country impact the other. So uh, we need to all uh, to be all part of this uh, change and we have to start immediately. And I can see that publishers like Emerald are creating a better awareness. Professors like yourself are trying to uh, um, uh, link the research to the practical uh, application and the, uh, and, 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 and the actual practical application of it and giving uh, guidance to uh, educational institutions on how to apply it. Uh, so that's the impact that we can measure that it's now very well known. People are talking about it. Researchers are being published about it. Uh, 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 professors like you and practitioners are trying to educate and disseminate their knowledge to others and, and share the experience. So uh, that's a great impact. And I, I'm hopeful that it will lead to uh, even uh, a greater uh, impact uh, soon. So last but not least, I would like to ask you why do you think it's very crucial that universities should apply the SDG learnings or the ESDG, as you said, uh, to their teaching? As discussed uh, earlier, the agenda of sustainable development goals is significant for every organization. And, and as I mentioned, no exception for the higher education institutions. So the higher education institutions should integrate and embed the agenda of sustainable development goals in their core values. It will start from the mission vision statement and then uh, integrate it into the, uh, to the, their operations, curricula, research and other activities. So these core values include mission and vision, as I already mentioned, curriculum development, teaching, pedagogies, operations and reporting to their stakeholders. So, so I think so. It will start from the from the uh, from the top management commitment, and it will end on the reporting of the uh, to the to the relevant and to the uh, to the broader stakeholders. Uh, yes, that's perfect, and we we cannot wait to see uh, how things will develop and uh, and the impact of this change, uh, how it's going to affect. Uh, the quality of uh, the learning and teaching process in the higher education and the equality uh, in it too. And uh, of course, we're starting with Pakistan uh, with you, Dr. Zahid. So without further delay, we cannot wait. And we're so anxious to uh, attend your uh, presentation for today. And um, uh, please uh, keep your questions to Dr. Zahid. You can write it in the questions part and to in the uh, question part, and uh, and we will read it at the end of the session. And he have prepared some engaging questions also at the end of the uh, presentation today. Uh, so stay focused. And uh, Dr. Zahid, you have uh, the mic, and I will not uh, take much of your time. So thank you so much for. Uh, honoring us with your presence today. Uh, please go ahead uh, and I'm here. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Mainul. So let me start my uh, presentation. So uh, uh, the agenda, everyone knows that sustainability for higher education uh, institutions or maybe for the higher education uh, sector. So uh, my uh, Okay, so the, the key takeaways or the, or the learning outcomes are after this session, you will be able to learn the, what sustainability is and why sustainability is required in our uh, fields, in every field and specifically I will focus on the, uh, on the higher education institutions. So what is the agenda of sustainable development goals uh, and how this agenda is integrated in higher education institutions and you can, uh, you can learn more about the education for sustainable development. Uh, the agenda of education for sustainable development and the business schools. Actually, I am related to the uh, to the management science, so I will focus on the business school. 
so the the uh, the participants from the other disciplines may, may, may interrelate their uh, the, uh, the education for sustainable development steps or sustainable development steps with their own department so later on we can discuss in the discussion and the question answer session that how they can integrate or how they can start their uh, sustainable development practices within their specific departments so i will also focus some of the regulatory reforms in pakistan so you can interrelate with your country as well i know that every country has their regulatory reforms regarding the uh, sustainability or the education for sustainable development or and of course for the sustainable development goals so education for sustainable development uh, a success story uh, let me uh, i will share some of the success cases that how we can how we can integrate or how we did uh, this uh, these practices within our university and at the end uh, there will be a group discussion and qna session so this uh, this is uh, about my profile so uh, i already uh, we have already discussed with you so there is no need to a focus again so uh, let me let me start the session from what sustainability is or what is sustainable so uh, you can see that uh, sustainable development was first kind by the Brantley commission report in 1987 and i always repeat this uh, this definition that uh, to meet the needs of present without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their own needs so this is a self explanatory uh, uh, definition and uh, which is signed by the United Nations World Commission on Environment and Development, the, the, the one of the uh, cited definitions. So simply you can see uh, WCED in every uh, publication related to sustainability. So it is simply to balance the uh, environmental, social, and economic sustainability of nations. This definition was first kind for the for the balancing of development in the nations but later on it has been some submerged in the every field and every sphere of life and no exception for the uh, for the higher education institutions okay so why why we required sustainability this is this is the main question so you can see that uh, you can see that the climate change is one of the one of the uh, threat to our future generations uh, the negative impact of the human activities, mass industrialization, and economic growth. So it has created a very negative impact uh, on the environment in the shape of climate change and global warming. So you can see the the you can see the uh, the uh, pre-industrial era here. So our temperatures was here, and now you can see that the temperature is rising, and now we are here. The 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 the, the environmentalists are trying to reduce the the. Uh, the climate uh, uh, negative impact of the climate to, to to this level but i think so this is very difficult for us but we can at least we can try in the in this uh, chart you can see that our our uh, population is growing and i think so we have crossed the 8 billion uh, population around the globe and, and it, it will create more uh, human activities and it will create more environmental issues more social issues and inequalities issues so you can see that the, the current century was the hottest century of the human civilization. So uh, it has created some of the uh, un, un, unusual patterns that somewhere there is a massive rain, somewhere there is a peat fires, landsliding and, and, and flood issues. In every country and specifically the gigantic flood in Pakistan has really devastating our assets and, and it has really given us a, 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 an economic impact, the negative economic impact. Uh, uh, the, the same climate changes uh, has uh, declined our biodiversity and uh, th these are some of the not the latest statistics but more than 52 percent of our biodiversity has been declined and it has been dis disappeared from the earth and and we we are we are we are facing and we will face more water scarcity problems around the globe so so this is very alarming for us that, that the economic issues are uh, are due to the environmental problems. Uh, you can see that there is. I, I always say the I always discuss about the inequalities. So you can see that in in, in eighty uh, trillion uh, dollar world economy in one chart. So you can see that there are some inequalities. I'm not focusing the negative impact of the negative aspects of these inequalities, but it has created some problems around the globe. So we need the uh, the, the, the the development sustainable for the economic, social, and environmental aspects. 
So, so to address these inequalities, we, uh, uh, as uh, Mainul discussed about the agenda of sustainable development. So, this is the, the these are the goals of 17 goals of sustainable development, and there are uh, 169 uh, targets and 231 indicators, sub targets and indicators which are focusing on the uh, on the uh, on the sustainable development. So I'm not going into the detail of one by one, but, but let me share some of the slides there, how universities can, uh, can contribute to these practices. So the first one is no poverty. So you can see that more than uh, 300, uh, 738 million people still live in extreme poverty. What universities can contribute there to reduce these, uh, these poverty issues? So more than 80% of people living on less than 190 uh, are in South Asia and Sub-Saharan Africa. So uh, I think so the audience from the, these regions. So I think so uh, you can see that uh, the, these problems are very important for the universities and every university are required to contribute in these uh, issues. You can see the zero hunger here. So hunger is also one of the important, uh, one of the crucial issue in, uh, in the developing countries as well. A good health and well-being. So you can see, I, I have I have collected some of the important uh, statistics here. So you can just focus on this and how universities can contribute in these uh, practices. Uh, uh, you can see the SDG four, which is related to the quality of education. So uh, in the quality of education, I have chosen some uh, some other sub targets. So you can see here they, these are the quality education sub targets. So uh, universities may focus on the universal and primary and secondary education, early childhood development and universal pre-primary education, uh, universities can contribute to these practices as well, equal success to, uh, to technical, vocational and higher education, relevant skills for the decent work, gender equality and inclusion, uh, universal youth literacy, education for sustainable development and global citizenship. So these are some of the sub-targets uh, of quality education, so universities should focus on these practices. Uh, and you can see here in the uh, in this slide that nowadays the impact ranking are demanding. Uh, the first one is no poverty. So the impact ranking is demanding that how universities can contribute in this no poverty issue. So you can see that I have uh, I have snapped this uh, from our impact ranking report of City University. So you can report uh, your practices like this. Later on, I will show you uh, a detailed report that how we can, how universities can contribute in the impact ranking and what the impact ranking required that the universities should contribute for the sustainable development goals. So some of the other uh, goals you can see, like gender equality, this is one of the important uh, 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 goal of the sustainable development and universities are required to promote the uh, gender equalities, uh, specifically providing education to the male and female uh, population. So you can see that there are some other statistics here. Some some more detail is also available later on. I will share one of the documents so you can see some other detail uh, regarding the each sustainable development goals. The sixth uh, sustainable development goal is clean water and sanitation. Universities can contribute as well. Uh, the seventh one is affordable and clean energy. Well, uh, actually, uh, I discussed about the operations of the sustainable, sustainable development in the uh, higher education institutions. So uh, in our university, we have uh, mostly converted our uh, energy uh, to the uh, renewable energy. So in this way, you can contribute. Uh, moreover, you can also uh, introduce some of the courses related to the affordable and clean energy solutions uh, to, the, uh, to the stakeholders like students and uh, other uh, members. The eight uh, sustainable development goals in decent work and economic growth. So this is uh, directly related to the, uh, to the management sciences and we are providing the decent work and economic growth uh, education to, to some of the students in, in, some, uh, in some courses like uh, corporate social responsibility, corporate sustainability, environmental sustainability and some other courses we are providing this decent work and economic growth uh, uh, education. Uh, you can see that our sustainable development goals like nine goal is industry innovation and infrastructure so normally engineering departments are really working uh, in these industry innovation and infrastructure so in our university we are focusing that how uh, our, our courses can be converted to the industry innovation and infrastructure changes uh, related to the sustainable development goals uh, uh, as Mainur discussed regarding the 
reduce inequalities so we can provide education to male female to every to other uh, aspects of the society so uh, uh, we can reduce the uh, inequalities in our society uh, in a in a local way and a broader way the, uh, the the 11th one is 11th goal is sustainable cities and communities we can aware no, normally we are providing some awareness sessions uh, to to aware the uh, the communities and uh, make the our uh, cities sustainable regarding the uh, environmental social and governance aspects uh, the fourth sustainable develop uh, the 12th sustainable development goals is a responsible consumption and production you can see that uh, a lot of food is wasting in our societies and some people are depriving for the food so uh, you can use our uh, consumption responsible this is not related only to the food but we can relate it with the business sector as well that how we can make our product responsible and uh, the consumption should and production should be sustainable. Uh, the 13th goal is, which is very important in my opinion, which is related to climate action. So uh, I think so nobody is uh, uh, separated from this goal and everyone is required to contribute in uh, climate actions uh, from academia to our home. So everyone is required to contribute for the climate change and reduce the negative impact of the climate change. So uh, uh, some of the sections are related to the life below water and life on land. So this is uh, some uh, some universities are providing uh, courses related to the life uh, below water and life on land. So 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 I think through some uh, uh, physics departments and health sciences department maybe can contribute to our uh, veterinary department and uh, departments can contribute to these uh, practices. Uh, the second last goal is uh, 16, which is related to the peace, justice, and strong institutions. So normally uh, we are focusing on the uh, corporate governance practices and uh, peace and justice in in our uh, in our broader societies, in our local societies. So universities can can contribute to these uh, uh, separate dimensions and uh, SDGs. Last but not least, you can see that this is uh, I really like this. Uh, this uh, this last sustainable development goals uh, you can see that a lot of funding is available in this uh, in, in in this specific sustainable development goals and we can uh, it will pro it will integrate all the goals so you can uh, you can create a partnership for all the goals with with the different institutions nowadays we are working with the pakistan stock exchange we are working with the small and medium enterprises we are working with the uh, with the some local institutions for the partnership of sustainable development goals. So a lot of opportunities, fundings, and everything is available specifically in this goal. So so I think so that's all for the sustainable development goals. So uh, uh, you can see the sustainable development goals in this way. Nowadays they are treating it as a people, prosperity, peace, partnership, and planet. So how universities can contribute. Uh, in these uh, piece, you can see these are uh, the piece, and you can see it like a society, a, a economy, and environment in this shape. So, so this is uh, these are the, the, the policies of the universities that how you can cater uh, cater these uh, these piece or these three dimensions of the sustainable development goals. Uh, you can see it here like four uh, nowadays they are treating it as four dimensions like a social, economic, environmental, and inclusivity and governance. So you can cover these four or five dimensions in your university that how you can deal uh, with these uh, specific dimensions and focusing the uh, separate SDGs, sustainable development goals. So uh, later on, we will at the end of the session, we will discuss about the role of the universities in achieving 17 sustainable development goals. So later on, we will discuss because uh, let me finish my presentation and at the end of the session, we will discuss about these uh, specific uh, slides. So let me discuss about the agenda of education for sustainable development. So as you have seen the definition, so when, when we when we get to the definition of sustainable development goals to the uh, higher education, so simply you can say this is education for sustainable development, which empowers the learners of all the ages with the knowledge, skills, values, and attitudes to address the interconnected global challenges we are facing, including climate change, environmental degradation, loss of biodiversity, poverty and other inequalities as we discussed in our previous slides. Uh, uh, let me share one of the publications 
that, 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 that how we can integrate corporate sustainability within our, uh, sorry, uh, it, uh, the theme of sustainability within our university. So uh, this is one of the publications I, I will share later on with you, the, the link. The link is already available. So you can see that uh, some of the, uh, the, uh, uh, the KPIs are available that how we can integrate sustainable development goals within the universities. But you can see that, that, that every, every KPI uh, uh, compendium has some limitations. So you can see that here innovations is missing, some, uh, some has uh, identification issues, sustainability in campus. So you can see that these are the, the dots of the missing figures. So the XR, yes, they have the, these sections. So these are some of the uh, KPIs that you can, how you can end this uh, education for sustainable development within the university. But these uh, KPIs has some missing uh, uh, dimensions. So uh, we have written this. Uh, we have written this paper, and we have designed one of the uh, one of the uh, uh, comprehensive uh, uh, index for the uh, for the universities that how they can integrate sustainable development goals. And we have applied it on the three universities in Pakistan. So there are eight dimensions. The first one you can see integration. So integration is very much important, as I already discussed. That it will start from the top management. So if everyone, uh, if every university wants to apply sustainable development goals, so they will start from the, in my opinion, this is my opinion and, and based on the literature, they will start from the integration. So integration will start from the top management commitment and it will go to the, to the, uh, to the uh, reporting to, this, uh, to the broader stakeholders. You can see sustainable development, uh, go, uh, sustainable development included uh, in their vision and mission. And then we can, we can apply it on the universities and we have found that some of the uh, universities are already following these, these, uh, these things. So you can see that this is the first one is integration. Integration is very important for the universities to, to start the sustainable development goals within their uh, operations. So uh, we have another paper, uh, you can see here that we have another paper and uh, we have conducted a study that uh, either integration is important or not. So you can see that uh, most of the uh, universities say integration is important, but they don't have integration. So integration is very much important. This is our another publication on the education for sustainable development. Uh, you can see the link here and you can download it. You can see it is freely available from the Emirate. So integration is very much important. The second step is uh, actually I am uh, I am focusing these uh, these because uh, these indexes has the limitations and we designed one of the index. The first one is the first step is integration. The second step you can see is uh, environmental sustainability. So the second step is environmental sustainability. You can see that uh, what are the the factors of environmental sustainability. Plan to improve energy efficiency, energy effective equipments, and something like that. You can see. So the second step is very much important for the universities to be environmentally sustainable. The third step is to change the curricula to the to the to the sustainable side. So you can see that we must introduce some of the courses related to the sustainable development goals to the students. They must aware that what, what is sustainability, what is sustainable, what are sustainable development goals and how we can, we can apply uh, in, into our routine life. Uh, uh, so, so you can easily design the courses. Most of the courses are, uh, uh, the curricula is available in different universities and you can integrate those courses into your curricula. So the third one is curricula, which is very important for the integration of sustainable development goals in the universities. The fourth one is research. Research is very much important. Specifically, I discussed that the impact ranking. The impact ranking will ask you that what are your research related to the sustainable development goals. So sustainable development goal is very much uh, sustainable development goals related research is very much important. So, so we have recently launched a City University Center for Sustainability Studies. Later on, I will show you the progress of uh, our center that what we have uh, achieved in last five years. So you can see in detail, uh, I'm not going into the detail because of the time limitations. So you can see the some of the steps here. Later on, you can download the paper and you can see the, the, the minute detail uh, of each dimension. Uh, the fifth uh, 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 
uh, step is social and economic development of the communities and uh, social and economic development of your students, social and economic development of your faculty. So this is very much important. So you can see some of the steps. Uh, these steps are uh, not uh, the final one. You can add some more steps to it, no problem. So these are the minimum requirements for the social and economic development, like exchange programs, joint sustainable development degrees with other universities, joint sustainable development research with other universities, collaboration and something like that. Uh, the, the sixth uh, 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 dimension or the sixth step for the integration of sustainable development goals within the university is awareness and volunteerism. So you must create some of the volunteers within the universities. You must create uh, the awareness sessions, you must create awareness sessions among the larger stakeholders, not only the university students or faculty members, or even in the uh, surrounding societies and your uh, other collaborators. So you can see that uh, sustainable development working groups with a member from the different departments, policies that promote sustainable development for all the, uh, for the students and, uh, and staff members. Uh, the second last is assessment and reporting. This is very much important because uh, when, when, when you are going to the impact ranking or something like that, so they will definitely ask you that what is your assessment and how you, you are reporting it to the stakeholders. So reporting is very much important. If you are reporting it, they will give you a high advantage in the impact ranking. And, and if you are not reporting, so they will give you a lower ranking. So you can see that assessment of sustainable development goes issues, communication to the broader stakeholders, environmental reports, sustainability reports, and something like that. Uh, the last but not least uh, step is infrastructure. Infrastructure change is very much important. Uh, we are totally paperless in our city university. We have almost fin uh, completely vanished the, uh, the, the printing systems. And we, uh, if someone is printing uh, more than 30 or uh, 40 pages. So next day, they are, uh, the boss will receive an email that he has printed already. Uh, uh, he has breached the contract of the uh, excessive printing, and he he or she have to be uh, to explain regarding the excessive printing. So we are totally paperless. We have management formation system for the for the examination section for the student for the faculty members. So we are totally paperless, and we are also uh, 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 producing renewable energies. Uh, in our campuses and, and this is uh, literally amazing for us that we are uh, we are we are changing the infrastructure it's uh, around 60 65 percent we have changed the infrastructure so 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 that was the last step for the integration that how we can integrate the sustainability practices within the universities uh, let me share the uh, agenda of education for sustainable development and business school so how we can we can integrate into the business school uh, as I mentioned that uh, uh, I, uh, I'm working with uh, Dean Faculty of Management Sciences. So uh, obviously I will uh, talk about the business school and uh, other participants may link it with their own department. So you can see the, the same definition has been adopted by the corporate sector. So we are connected with the, with the uh, to meet the needs of the enterprise and the stakeholder today while enhancing, sustaining and protecting uh, the human and natural resources of the future needs. So it is related to the stakeholder management, uh, same focusing social, economic, and environmental and inequality issues. Uh, uh, you can see some of the other uh, topics are there. Uh, maybe uh, it will uh, pass near to your uh, eyes, like triple bottom line, and ESG, socially responsible investment, and something like that. These are some of the interchangeable terms, and uh, uh, it's all about the stakeholders. Uh, you can see our uh, National Business Education Accreditation Council of Pakistan. They are really focusing on the social responsibility and it is covering the sustainable development uh, goals uh, within the business school. That what are you doing for your, your society? Or what are the main steps of the business school for the uh, socially responsible engagements? So you can see some of the uh, uh, regulatory, like educational regulatory steps here. Uh, same, you can see that Global Reporting Initiative, which is one of the agendas of the United Nations, and now this agenda is adopted by the Pakistan Stock Exchange, uh, Security Exchange Commission of Pakistan. So it is directly applied on the business school that they, they must provide education to the to their uh, graduates that 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 uh, that how they can uh, uh, integrate and report 
corporate sustainability or sustainability with the business uh, the businesses or the business domain uh, you can see the the global reporting initiative which is agenda of the united nation so these are some of the steps that uh, the same steps you can see with the integration of education for sustainable development the eight dimension so you can see some of the uh, similar dimensions in the business sector as well Uh, uh, as Mahinur was talking, so that was my first paper that I had modified the Global Reporting Initiative Index and Emerald awarded me award for excellence in 2016. So you can see here, I have already modified this index for the business sector. That, that these, are the, uh, these are the steps that uh, business community can take for the reporting to the stakeholders. You can see that in Pakistan, some of the companies are reporting global reporting initiatives. So these are some of the examples from the corporate sector. So in the corporate sector, uh, business uh, uh, candidates are required to learn these things. You can see the, the Pakistan Stock Exchange, the agenda is here, and they are really committed with the sustainable development goals. So it is very important for the business uh, candidates. You can see that some of the banks are reporting sustainable development goals nowadays and they have a very detailed report. You can visit their website and you can find that sustainable development goals reporting, uh, sustainability reporting there. So this is very much important for the business, uh, business schools as well. Okay, in the last section, I will report that education for sustainable development. My success story is that how we can uh, how we uh, incorporate these practices and what are the what are the success stories uh, uh, I can share with with the, with the world. So let me let me give you some examples here. Uh, you can see this report is designed by my uh, post grad students and we applied for the impact ranking and we got the impact ranking. Though our ranking was not that near to the to the top level, but but at least this this was the student one. And this report is totally 100% designed by the students. Uh, I'm, I, I always say thank you very much to those students. They have designed this report, and at least it has given us that at least they can work in the outside the uh, universities and they can design the really impact ranking report for the other organizations as well. You can see our impact ranking here. The report designed by the students, and then we applied for the impact ranking. We got another success story is there that recently we are we are invited by the my center center for sustainability studies is invited by the uh, pakistan stock exchange to design the esg and sustainable development goals reporting guidelines so actually this is one of the part of the sustainable stock exchanges initiatives which is with every every country is required to to, uh, to promulgate these practices and to, to, to register with the Sustainable Stock Exchange Initiatives. So Pakistan is also one of the members and uh, I'm working with them as a, uh, as a academia member to design the uh, reporting guidelines. So it is in the drafting form and inshallah soon it will be uh, completed and we will share it with the broader stakeholders. Another, another success story, let me share with you uh, that uh, we have designed the uh, CSR and sustainable development policy for the, uh, for the city university, and it is already approved and implemented in our university. So it is covering the, uh, 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 these, this initiative covering the broader stakeholders from student to the top management. And another another uh, aspect is here. We have already designed this course, and more than 100 students are graduated uh, from this course: corporate sustainability and financial performance. And the one report uh, which uh, which has submitted to the impact ranking, uh, designed by the by the by the uh, by the corporate sustainability and financial performance course students. So so we have uh, included this into the master. Uh, uh, MS Management Sciences and PhD in Management Sciences. We have included this course, and now we are in, uh, now we are designing another course for the bachelor students, which is covering the climate change and the environmental, social, and governance aspects. 
gender diversity and inclusion as well. So we are designing some uh, some some more courses for the bachelor level to to, to educate them in their uh, relevant needs. Okay, so uh, uh, as I was discussing there, uh, 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 in 2017, we have started City University Center for Sustainability Studies. So you can see the five-year uh, progress here. So more than 50 research publications we have produced in the ABS, ABDC, and uh, quality journals, uh, including Emerald, Elsewhere, and something like that. Uh, and uh, it has a cumulative impact factor is 130. Uh, uh, specifically in the domain of corporate sustainability, sustainable development goals, education for sustainable development, uh, and so on. More than 25 students in the education for sustainable uh, development uh, areas uh, have been graduated and now they are serving the, uh, the uh, different uh, uh, industry industries like education and corporate sectors. Oh, we have also worked in uh, policies and reports and more than five reports we have already worked with the, uh, with the regulatory bodies in Pakistan and Malaysia. Uh, so far we have availed uh, more than eight to ten grants, grants and completed those grants and submitted the reports. And uh, uh, the amount is not that much uh, high but more than five million Pakistani rupees we have utilized uh, in these uh, different researches. We have also uh, uh, arranged more than five international conferences related to the sustainable development goals, and more than five books and book chapters are already published uh, in the area concerned. Uh, you can see some of the uh, some of the uh, publications here. So uh, uh, these publications have their methodological and societal contributions. You can see that we have designed some of the indexes for the. Uh, for the, uh, the specific industries that how they can integrate and start their sustainability report. You can see some, some other uh, uh, contributions here. Uh, recently, we have designed one course, Education for Sustainable Development, the way forward, and it has been approved by the uh, uh, Department of State, uh, United States of America, and we were working with the University of Kentucky, and more than 400 faculty members were trained on the education for sustainable development. So I think so, it's a great milestone for us, and uh, uh, we have collaborated with the different universities, University of Karakoram International, uh, which is uh, in the uh, northern areas of, uh, in the Gilgit, Pakistan, and, and another university in the northern areas of uh, Pakistan, which is uh, University of Science and Technology. But so we have graduated more than, we have trained more than 400 faculty members uh, on the topic education for sustainable development. Another, uh, another aspect is we are also writing in the newspaper that to aware the, 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 the larger stakeholders regarding the embedding of education for sustainable development. So you can see some of the renowned newspapers here and we are publishing some of the articles from time to time. So you can see some of the examples here. So we have also published some of the books and uh, inshallah we will try to start some other books on the uh, developing countries like Pakistan with the Emerald inshallah soon. So you can see that these are our uh, books uh, which is uh, which are already published. Uh, we are also writing another book, The Era of Circular Economy and Sustainable Development. Uh, and we are focusing the Pakistani banking industry, how they are focusing the circular economy dimensions and sustainable development goals. Uh, so far, we have successfully collaborated with the uh, with these institutions you can see here. And today we have added the Emerald Insight pair, and we are really looking forward to some more collaborations. Uh, to contribute for uh, to the broader uh, stakeholders in the area of education for sustainable development, sustainability, and sustainable development goals.
so i think so that's all from my side and now uh, uh, i will i will ask my noor that to uh, give me some assistance that the role of universities in achieving 17 okay. goals it, it would be a 5 to 10 minutes discussion okay. that uh, how universities can contribute and what would be the real examples from the audience that how they, they are doing their job in the education for sustainable development area. Uh, hello, thank you so much for this great presentation, Dr. Zahid. Thank you so much. It's uh, an absolute pleasure and it's very informative and uh, your elaboration and how you presented an evidence for and, uh, and, uh, and also an instruction for every uh, recommendation and application, how it uh, should be done. Uh, that's uh, an amazing reflection, of course, and uh, and uh, also how you supported uh, your the theories with the practical application and the success stories that you've presented. We are so proud to have you, and uh, we are so honored to have this kind of uh, success uh, with us uh, and collaborating with us. So um, let's uh, let me see what you need me uh, to. Uh, how can I help? Uh, uh, so you thank, like you, thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much, Mainu. Actually, we have two slides here. One is uh, the the broader agenda of SDGs. I think so. Everyone is aware of uh, these uh, uh, sustainable development goals. But let me focus on this slide. This is very um, uh, very important and very detailed slide. You can see that there are there are separate dimensions here, like uh, like uh, poverty, and you can see the 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 some of the the sub sub targets here. So I think so. Yeah. Uh, the audience may focus on these and how they can integrate in their own departments and what are their success stories. We want to know, and maybe they, they can ask the, the, the questions as well. No problem for me. Okay. So uh, as you heard, Dr. Zahid, uh, this is for discussion for all of us for the education success, uh, sustainable development uh, goals that's related to courses in your respective subjects and departments. Uh, how can you, uh, how can you, how can you uh, apply it uh, as uh, this is what you need to do or like how can you integrate it within your curriculum or within your subject area or within the courses that you are uh, teaching? Um, you can uh, you can uh, you can share your uh, your thoughts about it, please. So I think they can share they can share the chat room as well, and maybe uh, maybe Mainu will pick some of the points from there and, and later on we yes. can discuss. So uh, I I would like to reflect on that if it's uh, possible, Dr. Zahid. Uh, I strongly believe in um, in. Uh, that uh, uh, in institutions, in order to successfully apply uh, education institution uh, to successfully apply uh, the uh, equality uh, and quality in education, uh, they need to bear in mind also the diversity uh, and inclusivity in education. So. Um, uh, First of all, the, the 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 resources to be available for everyone, uh, and 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 that's one thing. So uh, to have and to provide uh, resources uh, with high quality for those who cannot afford to pay for it, that's one uh, thing. And also, uh, if I'm working in an educational institution, one of the main goals is uh, the the blended learning uh, also uh, i've seen a lot of uh, learning difficulties and learning disabilities that they are in the same institution in the same class and they are facing difficult challenges and the professors and the institution they are not aware uh, of this situation and they are not providing uh, the help and uh, and the type of uh, information that they need and uh, that's absolutely against uh, the achievement of the SDGs so one of the things 
that I believe that uh, we should look into. For example, we have a lot of dyslexian students and we still use the same type of assessment with them, which it's not applicable. You cannot actually assess them because they are verbal uh, students. They are not the type who can write and express their thoughts in writing. So one of the things we should look into our curriculum uh, and the way we are uh, doing our lesson plans and the way we are setting the curriculum uh, and explaining the 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 methodologies we are using in teaching is it inclusive uh, are these methods and uh, this curriculum is suitable for all types of students that we are teaching are these assessments are suitable to actually assess uh, the learning outcomes that happen to all these students we can properly assess them are will they be able to engage with it and we can use it with, with all of them or not so i think this is one of the things that every institution should take in consideration in order to achieve uh, a, a proper quality in education and inclusivity and diversity to diverse their methods to diverse their uh, their their ways of assessing and to have an open mentality an open mind and to do a proper assessment for the skills for their students and their teachers too. Uh, I think this is one of the things that it came to me as an educator uh, today when I was listening to your, to, your, uh, to your presentation that this is the human side that most of uh, the institutions give the blind side to it. Um, I can. Uh, what do you think about that? Um, uh, I, I really agree uh, with your uh, with your uh, uh, with, with your comments that that uh, actually uh, what we are doing here that normally uh, uh, we are we are creating some groups in the department uh, in the in the classes that because uh, you know about the normality curve. So if uh, they're, 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 they're the average student, they're the high standard student, they, they can they can sit combined and they can they can easily uh, amalgamate the project and they can easily amalgamate the topic. The, the first thing is there, and the, uh, it will automatically cover the normality curve. That the, the 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 normal student will also learn the thing, the average student will also learn, and the high standard student will also learn. So I think so. Group activities are very much important. The second one is that we are we we are providing the at the end of the course that give us a survey regarding the instructor regarding the course material regarding the uh, the improvements regarding the uh, the overall uh, assessment of this of the specific subject. So when they will they give us the, uh, the the feedback and then after the quality enhancement cells are looking into that and and we have also. Uh, provided a scale to the faculty member as well if you are if you are in the red red uh, color it means that you are you are subject teaching was not that uh, up to the standard and you have to improve those those things so we are we are looking these things uh, that's uh, in this way we can reduce the inequalities within a specific subject so i think so for me uh, uh, a strict monitoring is very much important uh, to focus the inequalities within the class that that what how they are delivering what they are delivering the the material and at the end the 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 pre and post surveys are very much important to reduce these inequalities and towards to reach to the sustainable uh, solutions of the teaching methodologies thank you so much and um, i think that was a very uh, uh, a very interesting point and a very uh, very important point for me to discuss and um, and I would like to share some other uh, questions from the audiences too so uh, we have uh, from Dr. Ikhtar Ahmed uh, the, he's saying that uh, the university business uh, uh, incubators engagement would further just a second would further strengthen uh, the higher education sustainability. What do you think about that? Uh, I think so. This is this is one of the great uh, solutions that universities 
should work on the in incubations and they should start their own uh, businesses. Uh, in Pakistan, uh, literally, uh, I, I, I will not share the name of the universities, but they have they have the properties of million dollars. They have properties of million dollars, but they are unsustainable. They are unable to pay their salaries. They should they should they should start uh, new ventures. They should uh, they they should incubate those properties to the new ventures, and they, they can they can earn a lot uh, more than their academic activities. So I think so. This is very much important important for the universities as well as for the students as well. They should provide platform to the students as well that how they can they can start new ventures, their new new startups, and how they can learn uh, how they can learn and earn uh, for their own as well as for the societies, for their families, and uh, of course for the universities as well. So I think so. This is amazing. One of the amazing ideas specifically in developing countries, they should focus on the self-sustained models like a startups and incubations. Uh, exactly, I totally agree with this. And it's a very important indicator, of course. Uh, also from uh, 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 Dr. Sadiq Ali, uh, he's uh, saying that uh, sustainable higher education require finances. So what, do you what would you suggest for financial sustainability of higher education institutions uh, in Pakistan. And if you could please focus on the public sector universities. Uh, and it's uh, with kind regards from Dr. Sadiq Ali, UET uh, Peshawar. Oh, I think so. This is, uh, this is uh, one of the great questions I a great dimension as well of the sustainability of the public sector university specifically in Pakistan. Literally, I am I'm from the uh, private sector and, and you have seen my five to six year progress in the, and, and this is totally virtually centered. Nobody provided me funding and I'm, I'm doing without any funding. This is one of the aspects. Another aspect, yes, I agree that sustainable practices are required funding. So maybe there are some other uh, practices in the universities which, which, has, which are not that much fruitful. So I think so some of the funding should be spared uh, off for the, uh, for the sustainable practices. And once it will start it, it will automatically, everyone will understand the reaping of this, these practices and everyone uh, will, will then provide funding to, the, to, the, uh, to these sustainable practices. So I think so this is the responsibility of government that to provide some of the funding to the sustainable practices, like they are providing some of the funding to the uh, research innovation centers like OREC, we can call it Office of Research Innovation and Commercialization. They are providing some funding to those uh, OREC's as well. So they must provide some of the funding to the incubation as well as to the uh, sustainable practices as well. So indeed funding is required. Fundings are required for the sustainable practices. And, and this is the responsibility of the top management that how to, uh, to, uh, to accumulate funding for the sustainable practices. But my center is totally self-sustained, no funding, and this is totally virtually set. So this is one of the uh, examples for you. Uh, thank you so much. I hope this answered your question, Dr. Uh, Sadiq. Uh, there is also uh, a very uh, 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 a very uh, a great comment from uh, Sadia uh, Batul, and she's saying that's a very uh, nice presentation and important topic, sir. The development of incubation centers is a good idea, but I noticed that uh, though SDGs uh, encompass uh, multidisciplinary, still environmentalists are not giving due uh, opportunities. As many departments open up such initiatives and higher economists, uh, but the public administrations instead, they, um, uh, the public uh, 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 administrations and instead of environmentalists, uh, they hire uh, economists. So what is your uh, opinion on this uh, that would be highly uh, appreciated? Um, um, uh, yes, uh, uh, yes, I, I, I got the I got the question that, that nowadays uh, you know about the greenwashing. 
So actually, she is uh, she is indicating the greenwashing of this uh, uh, sustainable development practices and something like that. Um, uh, uh, we have seen uh, great offices uh, here uh, in our region as well, but their uh, their contribution is is not that much of uh, prominent. So I think so she is right that we should focus on the materiality. Nowadays, another concept of global reporting initiative, and you can you can you can link it with the sustainable development goals and education for sustainable uh, development as well. That we need materiality, and nowadays another concept is coming: double materiality. Double materiality is that that what you have taken from the society in the shape of uh, finances or the shape of tangible things, and what you have returned to the society in the tangible form. So once we, we we will report in the tangible form, like a materiality and double materiality. So of course nobody will question that that, that this organization or this specific uh, section is not working uh, at the mark because we need materiality, not like a greenwashing and only reporting or like a simply uh, you can say that just a, a statements reporting. We need actually concrete and material reporting that what we have done in actually and these are the tangible results so we need the actual result so i think she she uh, she is absolutely right and i think so we need some material contributions rather than some greenwashing and tokenism approaches like uh, it, it should be only just to fill in the blanks thank you so much dr zahid and uh, i hope this answered your uh, question dr sadia uh, so, uh, you have mentioned uh, eight uh, uh, points on how universities can contribute to the SDGs sustainability. So, there is another question here, and I believe that's uh, rather important, on what, there are eight, of course, and you have illustrated and elaborated around them, but uh one of the questions that uh, came from one of our audiences that what are uh, the immediate sdgs that the universities can contribute to or apply and see a quick impact okay uh, uh, this is very important question uh, very nice questions are coming from the audience uh, normally when we are applying for the impact ranking so uh, they they can they can uh, they can randomly ask you that to provide four SDGs uh, main four SDGs that, that 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 how you are contributing in those four SDGs and normally one of the SDGs which is quality education is always uh, 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 compulsory for all the institutions. So I think so when we are connected with the uh, higher education, so I think so quality education is uh, is compulsory for us. And some other three to four are also uh, important for uh, for us here. So you can you can focus that. The, uh, I'm talking about the universities. So the uh, poverty is very much important for the for the universities. Quality education is very much important for them. And and, and specifically in developing countries like uh, gender equality is one of the important issues. So gender equality is also important for for them. And always we are talking about the climate change. So I think so. For the Pakistan climate change is also very much important nowadays uh, the, there's a reaping season of the wheat and uh, literally we are facing a very 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 un, uh, un means uh, un, with the pattern is very different of the uh, of the environment so we are fa facing a lot of issues uh, like food so uh, when we focus on these four like a climate poverty quality education and gender equality so I think so we can we can address uh, some other uh, uh, SDGs as well. So uh, for me, uh, partnership for the goals is also very very important. So if we uh, partnership for the goals, like the universities can partner for the goals, so automatically you can achieve all the uh, sixteen goals. Uh, thank you so much for elaborating on this. Um, so there is a relevant question to the first question, as you said that uh, the gender equality uh, is one of the quickest uh, SDGs that the universities can actually apply and you can see a quick impact. So uh, how is the gender ratio uh, for professors at your uh, university or where you work 
And um, do you think it's in line with the gender equality? Uh, it's 70-30. Uh, we, we have a ratio 70-30 and literally uh, straight away we are providing 30% discount to the uh, field discount to the female faculty, uh, female students. Directly we are providing uh, 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 a field discount wow. to them and they can join us and uh, you can see the, the, the screen, the scholarships are here. So we are providing scholarship to the, to the male, female as well. So, but but uh, straight away uh, you can see the percentage of the scholarship to the female students straight away we are going. Wow, that's uh, that's amazing, really. Um, uh, another question that uh, concerning uh, the sustainability assessment tools and dimensions. So in, uh, you have mentioned uh, that uh, uh, the dimensions are uh, divided between the education and the curriculum itself, the research, the operations, the faculty development, uh, and other uh, student engagement. So um, I understand the metrics itself, but I don't know how do you integrate it in uh, in real life. Like, uh, what comes first from your point of view, and uh, and um, and how can you integrate it, or how it can lead uh, to the second step? So, for example, of course. We, we are concerned first with the education process and the curriculum. So do you have like a committee who develops the educational process and the curriculums for each subject area in accordance with the SDGs? And, uh, and then uh, how it's being run and do you require after that a certain uh, development program for your uh, educators? in order to be able to uh, you know to provide and uh, uh, and teach with these uh, enhanced or developed curriculums or how how do you integrate this process actually um, this is also one of the important questions from you uh, my Nur. actually uh, in, in in your front you can see one of the slides so these are some of the like a sustainability assessment questionnaire, SAQ, STAR, there are some, some, some of the KPIs around the globe. So you can see that uh, uh, the, it is covering the education, research, operations, faculty development, outreach, student engagement, planning and administration, innovation, and something like that. So, so when we study this, uh, these indicators, uh, we found that there are some, some gaps available there. So this is totally based on the literature. The previous literature and of course our opinions as well regarding the subject area so i already mentioned that this is not the final uh, this one is not the final uh, index you can you can modify it you can object us you can you can you can uh, uh, adapt in a very good manner uh, in the future as well so so we have concluded that from the literature these eight dimensions are very important for the universities to apply the sustainable development goals within their uh, operations. Uh, regarding the uh, committees, that either the committees are available or not in universities to, to, uh, to, to streamline the courses or to design the courses. So, so if, you, if you see here, so SD office, uh, SD working group, staff dedicated to sustainable development goals. So you can see that these three, if, if you have these three uh, 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 aspects in your university, so I think so you can you can you can contribute better than other university who don't have who, who don't have such uh, uh, dimensions. So uh, the staff dedicated to sustainable development, uh, a sustainable development working group in your university, sustainable development office. So uh, I I can treat my office uh, center for sustainability studies that this is related to sustainable development goals, and we we can provide different. Uh, consultancies within the university and outside the university as well. Recently, we have also uh, entered to another collaboration with the uh, with the Karakoram University. We are designing their impact ranking reporting. So, uh, so I think so uh, it can serve the purpose. I think so. Yeah, thank you so much for this answer. It was really uh, important. And uh, one of the questions that uh, and, and, comes. Uh, sorry, uh, let me let me sorry for uh, sorry for cutting you. Uh, 
discussion but but we have some funding from the top management as well at the end you can see university leaders provide and sustainable development budget are kind of support to us yes they are providing uh, very very great support to us and whatever we are we have demanded uh, just uh, they say approved so this is very much important for us yes that's very important and uh, i i think that if this uh uh, like this plan and this uh, um, experience that uh, it's applied in other institutions uh, to you, you will feel uh, an instant impact uh, right away. Uh, so uh, there is another question that for the institutional uh, environmental sustainability, and uh, I know one of the things that uh, we face is the waste itself especially in the printed papers and uh, i know that we are digitalizing there is a lot of online resources uh, a lot of professors now are moving to the e-classrooms and uh, and e-resources and engagement uh, with the online assessments but i i think that we have the same and similar situation here in egypt and uh, and similarity between egypt and pakistan and several uh, several other uh, struggling countries with their ec economics is uh, the internet and not all the universities uh, can provide uh, these type of digital resources or uh, not everyone can afford uh, the usage of the internet to download and uh, and study online with the uh, digital resources so what do you think we can do uh, to minimize the paper waste and the, the of course uh, uh, everything that's relevant and how can we try to solve this uh, problem like maybe dedicate certain hours at the university library for students who cannot afford to have their own laptop or internet at home what what do you think we how can we manage uh, to uh, tackle this uh, issue um, i think so this is one of the important uh, aspects as well so uh, as i mentioned that we are totally paperless and we have policy that more than 30 pages if someone will print so he will receive an email and, and his boss will also receive an email that to explain that why you printed these 30 pages so he or she have to explain those things so we are totally paperless and we we are providing mis solution to to our students to our staff members to every department we have an internal memo system and email system as well so we have reduced i think so i i don't remember that uh, in, in previous three months i have ordered uh, uh, the, uh, the pages for my printer i didn't uh, right. order any any pages for the printer literally i'm i'm not exaggerating if someone wants to come if someone wants to come come here and see my see my uh, right. we have online system yeah so so we are not utilizing any uh, hard pages our higher education institution is also uh, online so I think so the Egypt and Pakistan, uh, we have the same similarities, but we have to change the habits of the, our stakeholders. We should, we should aware them. And, and I think so digitalization is the only solution that reduce the, the use of the physical resources. Uh, and the third one is that we have provided some portal to the, uh, to the university for students. So they can, they can, they can access uh, internet in the library, in the labs, and they can, they can do their assignments and something like that and they can submit directly online to the LMS system. There is no need to print. So I think so uh, we, we are doing some, some, uh, some steps here so we can follow those steps and maybe we can learn from our uh, audience as well that what they are actually doing and how we can improve these practices. So I think so we can, we can, we can uh, if you want. Uh, yes, I'm sure we can. When there is a will, there is always a way. And I think exactly. this is, uh this is the most uh important uh matter is to know that uh we are uh what we do and everything that we do it it has an impact uh whether positive or negative and we don't only impact ourselves or only our community but our global community our kids our grandkids 
whatever we're doing to the environment, whatever, how we are developing the education, how we're including everyone, how we're providing a better uh, quality in education, in uh, equality in, uh, in, uh, and diversity at the workplace and institutions, inclusivity, how we are uh, protecting our environment, minimizing the waste, the recycling, every step that you can take counts every uh, thing uh, that's harmful that you can avoid counts every uh, information and everything that you have experienced that you can share with others and uh, and uh, inform them and uh, uh, encourage them to do the same as being for with with being an an example uh, it uh, it's uh, it's uh, it, it it matters and you can see the impact uh, of it um, and we can see the impact of uh, one a great professor with uh, great experience and passion about making a difference and making a change uh, for through uh, uh, researching and uh, starting with himself and making this change in his institution and trying to disseminate this experience and this uh, knowledge to other institutions, collaborating with an international publisher uh, to, up, to, to, to share it to the wider society and the global society, uh, that we are thankful for his efforts and we are thankful for his uh, principles and for his experience and for his knowledge and for his collaboration for today uh, he started with himself and now he's disseminating this to others you can be uh, the change if you have the will uh, it's easy uh, if you put your mind on it uh, consider yourself consider your wider community consider uh, everything that you do will have an impact. Uh, thank you so much. We are thankful to have you today, Dr. Zahid. Uh, it was a very informative session. I personally uh, will thrive from this information for a very long time. I'm sure that I'll be sharing all the data that I've collected and experienced today with everyone that I meet who share the same interests and uh, i'm sure that uh, all the audiences and all the attendees will agree with me that uh, uh, to send you a great salutation and thank we are all thankful for your presence today and for all what you've provided us uh, with today thank you so much uh, for this great session and we are definitely looking forward to see more of your research outcome and more of uh, the impact of what you are doing. And I'm sure that you'll be contacted with so many universities and education institutions, and maybe even other publishers to see how can they collaborate with you. Uh, but I hope Om Emirat will always come first to you. Uh, so thank you yeah. so much for being uh, here today. And thank you. Uh, Ms. Amina Saeed, our business manager, for introducing us to Dr. Zahid. Thank you for all the effort that you've done to uh, organize uh, and, uh, this session and put us in contact with such uh, a successful uh, professor. And thank you, Ms. Nadine, uh, our marketing, regional marketing manager, for all the effort in uh, uh, organizing the session, sending all the material, and uh, and uh, promoting the session. And of course, she will be uh, publishing also the video on our YouTube channel too, and will be sharing it with all the contacts who attended the session today. Uh, thank you so much, Dr. Zahid. If you have anything to say uh, before we uh, say goodbye to our attendees. Uh, yeah, of course, I will say that uh, thank you very much for bearing me, bearing me for such a long marathon. So thank you very much, everyone. Thank you very much, uh, Manu. Thank you very much, Amina Sri. Thank you very much, Nadine. And thank you very much, Emirat. And I am also thankful of the audience. So thank you very much for your appreciation. And inshallah, in future, we will be in contact and we will, we will uh, give you some more uh, pro uh, prospects of the 
sustainable education for sustainable development and sustainability in the future. So it is really encouraging for me. Thank you very much, everyone as well. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. And thank you for all our attendance. Please wait for our follow-up email. It will be within one day after the session. It will contain links uh, to uh, all our uh, resources and the contact details for uh, that uh, kind, Dr. Zahid kindly shared and the contact details for me and for Ms. Amina, Ms. Nadine, for anything that you uh, require or if you'd like to subscribe, of course, to uh, our SDG content. Thank you so much for attending today. I hope that we have answered uh, all the questions that you had in mind before attending the session. Uh, and we're looking forward to see you in our coming session. Please. Uh, follow our, us on LinkedIn and our uh, um, Emerald in the Middle East and Africa Facebook page to know more about our uh, events, uh, free resources, uh, webinars, uh, and everything that you need uh, to know. Thank you so much, Dr. Zahid. And we're looking forward for our future collaboration together. Have a great uh, week, everyone, uh, and goodbye. Stabilis, thank you so much, thank you so much.